Hey guys, today's episode is all about materials in 3GS. So we're gonna go over some of the different materials we have available to us and the parameters that they take to create different visual effects. So let's dive in. So we've got your basic 3GS scene set up. We've got our renderer, our normal perspective camera, our scene, a couple of lights so that our materials will respond to lights. And we have three different types of geometry that we're adding to this scene. We have a box geometry, so a cube, we have sphere geometry, and we have a plane, and this plane is rotated to be the floor so that all of our elements are gonna sit on top of it. Then we just have our render loop, which loops with request animation frame, and we are rotating the cube on the X and Y axis. So we can go ahead and actually start adding materials. The most basic material is mesh basic material. So we can go ahead and preview that. And you see, you can see what it does is it actually just applies a single color with no shading or anything to each of our meshes. So here we have our cube rotating, we have the sphere, and we also have the pl our floor plane. So we can go back in and change the color of that by passing in an attribute. We'll make all these red. And there you can see we have all of our meshes converted to red. We can also enable transparency on all our materials. So if we set the transparent flag to true, we can then manipulate the opacity and set it to 0.5. So 50% opacity on all of our material. We can also set wireframe to true and it will only draw the edges of all of the faces in our geometry. We can also manipulate the wireframe line width by setting it to a larger number than one and you'll see that lines get thicker as they're drawn. So another material that we have available to us and perhaps more useful is mesh normal material. And this maps the normal vectors to RGB colors, so the direction that the faces are facing. And you can see here we have it still using wireframes, but we can go in and disable wireframes and you can see it applies it to the mesh faces appropriately. Another material we have available to us that will actually respond to the lights within our scene is the mesh Lambert material. And this represents non-shiny or dull surfaces. So one of the properties we can manipulate on the Lambert material is the color, just like in the basic material. So we can apply a color to this and it will reflect that in the material. Another property available on the mesh Lambert material is the emissive property, which you can set to a color and this adds a glow-like effect with that color on your material. So this affects the part of the material that would typically be affected only by the ambient light within your scene. You can also adjust the emissive intensity, which will influence how powerful that color is on the material itself. We can also specify which sides are being drawn of the material. So the default is three front side, which is the outer facing sides on a cube or a sphere. We can also set it to three back sides. So for example, if a plane is facing us, then that side is the front side, but the side facing away from us is the back side. So when we set it to three back side, you actually don't see the plane because the side that we are setting it to is facing away from us. Also, you'll notice that our cube looks a little distorted, and that's because we're actually seeing through the front face. So you're seeing the insides of the cube as it's rotating. We can also set it to three double side, and in this example, it'll just look the same as three front side, but for example, if you had a rotating plane, as it rotated 180 degrees, that back side would then be visible still, whereas normally with three front side, the back side is not visible, so you would see through it and the plane would disappear. We can also apply texture maps to our material by adding a texture to the map property that we're passing along to it. So here we're just loading in a texture and applying it to it, and you can see it automatically maps to the materials that we're using. Another kind of material that responds to lights is a mesh fong material. And this represents a shiny surface in contrast to our Lambert material. So you can see the intensity with which the light reflects off of the surface is a lot brighter than with the Lambert material. So the fong material has a specular color that you can add 
and a shininess value, which can adjust the amount of brightness with which the light reflects off the surface. Fong materials also accept maps, just like most other materials within 3JS. We can also apply a normal map to our Fong material, and this uses a texture as its source and uses that texture to apply and simulate bumps and physical abrasions on the material itself. A newer kind of material in 3JS is the mesh standard material, and this aims to combine the Fong and Lambert materials into one material. So it has parameters for roughness and metalness, and adjusting and increasing the roughness makes it a duller surface area, so lights reflect off of it more evenly, whereas decreasing the roughness makes a smoother surface, so light has a more intense reflection off of it. Similarly, with metalness, as we increase the metalness, the intensity with which the light reflects off of it gets higher, making it seem more like a metal material, whereas reducing this spreads out that intensity, so it feels less metallic and more plastic. Another kind of material that we have available is the mesh depth material, and this basically converts our mesh or a 3D object into grayscale based on the depth of the object. So the further away it is, the more white it becomes and the things closer to us become dark or black. So you can see here we have a mesh depth material applied, but you'll notice that the furthest thing away, our background, is black. And that's because we don't have a material there. So what we need to do is to make our clear color on our renderer white. So now you can see we actually have a grayscale representation of our entire scene and you can use this and pass it into shaders and use it for other interesting effects based on the depth of the elements within your scene. So far the materials we've been using have been exclusively for meshes, for example, the mesh basic material. But we also have other types of materials. For example, we have the line basic material and this applies to lines. So if we go through and switch out mesh to line everywhere that we're adding it, we can use the same geometry to draw lines instead of triangulated meshes. We also have a line dashed material which allows us to draw dashed lines. And we can pass in parameters for both the dash size and the gap size. Now, in order for this to work, we have to call a method on our geometry called compute line distances. And this is so that it knows the distance of the line in order to calculate the dash and gap length. So there you can see we have dash lines representing each of our geometry. Like a line material, we also have points material. So if we take points material and it replace everywhere we have line with points, what we now have is points drawn for each of our geometry. So all of our geometry now shows the points rather than the mesh or the lines connecting those points. So the last material we're going to talk about for now is the sprite material, which you can pass in a texture to as a map. And Unlike meshes, lines, or points, a sprite takes only one parameter, and that's the material that you pass into it. So we can add our sprite to the scene, and you can think of the sprite as a plane. So it's a basic 2D plane, except the difference here is that the sprite always orients itself to the camera. So you can't move around a sprite in 3D space because it's always facing the camera. So here you can see we can preview our sprite and it's just drawing it flat on the screen and we're actually animating the rotation of this sprite but because it always faces the camera it doesn't actually affect it visually. So that's how sprites work. So just to review everything we've covered we discussed mesh basic material which is the simplest material with no shading and solid color we discussed mesh normal material, which colors the various faces of your mesh depending on the direction that they're facing. 
We also talked about mesh Lambert material, which applies shading based on lights, and mesh Fong material, which is another shaded material that gives more of a metallic luster. We also discussed mesh standard material, which combines the Fong and Lambert materials into one material, utilizing the roughness and the metalness properties of the material. We also discussed mesh depth material, which allows you to shade things into a grayscale image based on the depth of the material within your scene. We talked about how you can draw lines using line basic material. We showed how you could draw dashed lines using line dashed material. And we showed how you can draw your geometry as points using points material. We also discussed sprite material and how you can draw textures to sprites that will always be facing your camera. So that's it for my episode on materials in 3JS. I hope you enjoy this episode, and if you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.